Hello, this is Matt from Matt Heaney Apps, and welcome to part eight in the series covering all of the basics of Swift Free. In this video, we will take a look at loops. So let's jump straight into Xcode. Okay, so into Xcode, and we want to get started with a playground. We will call this loops, and we will delete this string so we have a nice blank playground. Okay, so what are loops, and why would we use a loop? Well, with a loop, what we can do is take a block of code and we can run it over and over and over again. And with loops, we can easily run a block of code a lot of times. So a loop can take a block of code and it can run it over and over and over again. Our code will loop back round and run the same thing over and over again for the amount of times that we want it to. So there are three different kinds of loops that we will look at. We will look at four loops, while loops and repeat while loops. So let's start with a for loop. So what we would do is say for our keyword and to set up a for loop, we have to set up an index name and a range. So we we'll set this up and I'll explain what it's doing. So we'll say for i, i for index, in one dot 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 10, open curly, drop a line. So what we're saying is take any code between these curly brackets and run it. And the first time you run it, what we will do is take i and set that to one. Okay, so it will run this block of code with i being set to one. When it reaches the bottom, it will go back to the top. It will add one to i and then run again. So the first time it runs, i will be set to one. The second time it runs, I will be set to two. The third time it runs, I will be set to three and so on. And it will keep going until I reaches 10 and it will run including 10. So what we can do if we actually print down to the log I, as you can see, this is running 10 times. But down here, we are printing one, two, three, all the way up to 10 because we're running this code 10 times. With i starting at one, then it runs again, adding one to i to two, then again to three, and then again with i being four, again i being five, again i being six, and so on up to and including i being 10. So if we change this range to five to say, I don't know, something random 98, it will run, i will be five, because we're printing i, five all the way to 98, okay? So this is our index name and this is our range. So what we could do, if we set up a variable before this called my number, it'd be an int set to zero and our range is say one to a hundred. What we could do is take my number and add to it i. We will then print my number. So what we're doing is we are running this block of code with i being set to this first number, which in this case is one. So we run this block of code with i being set to one. So we take my number and we add whatever i is to my number. So in this case, we're saying take my number and add one. We then run it again with i now being set to two. We've added one to i. So this time we're taking what my number is and adding two. So we get three. We go again with i being set to three, taking that number and adding three to it up to six, adding four, adding five, adding six, adding seven, adding eight, and so on a hundred times, okay? So just with that little for loop, we've run that code a hundred times. Okay, pretty cool, right? So that's what a for loop is. We take an index name and we take a range and our index will start at the first value in our range, run the code, then add one to itself, run the code again, and it will keep doing this until it reaches the end of our range and it will run for 100. Okay, so it will go up to 100 and including 100 or up to 40 and including 40. Now, if you didn't want it to include this final one in the range, what we can do for the range, say dot, dot, less than sign, and this will say, go up to this number and do not include this number. So only go to 39, okay? 
So that is one of the uses for a for loop. Now what we can also do with a for loop is run through collections such as arrays, sets, and dictionaries. So let's quickly set up an array. So var players will be an array of strings, and this will be the players in our game. So this was our example from a few videos ago. So even though this is an array, what we're about to do would also work for a set. So what we can do is say for player in players. And what this for loop will do says go to players and get the first value and run this block of code with player being set to this first value. Once it's finished, go again, but this time with player, this here, being set to the second value and then again for the third and again for the fourth. So what we could do is print this player is player, this from here. So as you can see, we are running through our array, taking all four names and running the same code for each item on that array, saying this player is Matt, this player is Emma, this player is Jay, and this player is Will. So with a for loop and an array, or with a set, we can run through affecting each item with the same block of code. Now to do this with a dictionary, it's a little bit different. So quick dictionary, scores of type string to int. So the key and the value, which we set up in our last video. So we have a name and a score. We will have, say, three of these. Now to run a for loop for a dictionary, we can say for, and what we could do is say something like for player name in scores.keys. So take our keys, Matt, Emma, and Jay, and run that, or for values. In this case, it'd be for score in scores.value. So this would work it for 10, 15, and 18. Okay, so just to show the score is score. So we should now print 10, 15, and 18. 10, 15, and 18. Okay, if we ever wanted the for loop for both the key and the value, we could say for and in brackets, player comma score in scores. So our dictionary name, and this will set the key to player and the value to score. So this time we can print something like players score is score. So we're taking these names from here. So now as you can see, Matt's score is 10, Emma's score is 15, and Jay's score is 18. So we're running through the dictionary, grabbing the keys and the value, and running the same block of code for every pairing in the dictionary. So loops make working with arrays, sets, and dictionaries a lot more useful. So that is what we can do with for loops. So that's the first kind of loop. The second kind of loop is a while loop, which will pretty much say, take a look at a condition, and if this condition is true, run that block of code. It's a bit like an if statement. But this time, once it's finished running that code, it will take another look at the condition, and if it's true again, it will run again, and it will keep running until the condition is no longer true. So we will set up a variable called example number. It will be an int, and for now, we will set it to zero. So what we can now do is say while our keyword while and then a condition. So while example number is greater than zero, do the following code. So we will print I am running and example number is set to and then whatever example number is set to. So what we're saying is take a look at this condition and if that's true, run this block of code. And if it is true and it is run, once it's finished, take another look at the condition and if it's still true, run again. And once it's done, take another look at the condition, and if it's true, run again, and so on, until that condition is no longer true. So at the moment, it's not running, because example number is not greater than zero. Now, for it to run, example number has to be greater than zero. So we could just set this number to be greater than zero. However, what it would then do is that this will run forever, it'd be an infinite loop, and sooner or later, it would crash Xcode, because it would never end. If we just set this to 10, example number would always be set to 10 and therefore it will always be greater than zero and therefore this will always be true and therefore it will just keep running this over and over and over again until it crashes. So in a while loop what we normally do is say while example number is greater than zero and then somewhere in here affect example number to like take one away from it. So now if example number is set to 10 this will run because this is true and it's going to run this. It will print this and it will take one away. So now example number is nine. So this is still true, run it again. Example number is now eight. 
This is still true, run it again, and keep going until this is no longer true. So, as you can see, I am running, and example number is set to 10. Set to 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and it will stop after 1, because when we take 1 away from it, it will now be set to zero and this will no longer be true so it will stop running okay so with a while loop we are saying if this is true run this code and once you finish running it check that condition again and if it's still true run it again and keep doing this until it's no longer true and then stop okay so that's a while loop and the last one is pretty similar this one is repeat while for this one we will have var and we will call it another example number of type int and it will be set to zero so for this one we're going to do something pretty similar so our condition is going to be if another example number is greater than zero but this time we will say repeat open curly drop a line and after the closing curly bracket here we will say while and here we will say another example number is greater than zero and in this block of code we will print the repeat while loop is running and number is set to another example number okay so our condition is another example number has to be greater than zero and that's not true so you might be thinking that this isn't going to run but this does run and that's because in a repeat while what we do is we always run this code here at least once because what we do in a repeat while is we run the code and then we check the condition and if it's true it will run it again but because we're checking the condition after it's been run once it's always guaranteed to run at least once so what we're saying is do this line of code, okay? Definitely do it once, no matter what. So this line is going to run no matter what. And once it's finished running once, then we check our condition. And if it's true, we run it again, and then we check again. And if it's still true, we go again and so on. But if it's false, we just carry on. So we don't repeat it. So in a repeat while, we run this code at least once, but if the condition afterwards is true, it repeats it. And it will keep repeating this whilst this condition is true. But even if the condition is not true, this code here will run once, okay? So that is a repeat while, and that is our three different kinds of loops. We have a for to cycle through a range. We have for to cycle through an array, a set, or a dictionary, affecting all the objects in that collection with a certain block of code. We have a while, which says check a condition, and while a condition is true, run a block of code, and then check the condition again, and if it's still true, run it again. And a repeat while, where we're saying definitely run this code at least once, and then check our condition, and if it's true, repeat the code, and then recheck the condition, and if it's true repeat it again and check the condition again and so on but even if the condition is not true we're guaranteed to run this code at least once because we're running it before we check the condition so that was our look at loops post any questions down in the comments and as always thank you very much for watching if you liked watching this video which i really hope you did make sure to hit that like button hit subscribe and i will see you next time goodbye